All right, so this is step two with our integration strategies, and that's to try use substitution. So we already did simplify. This is not simplifying. So we move on to trying use substitution. And when we pick use substitution, we want to pick stuff that's on the inside. So we would pick that natural log of x or the 1 plus ln of x squared or the entire radical or the entire denominator. We got a lot of choices here. Well, I think what you're looking probably for right now is you're probably seeing, let's try with the ln of x. And I agree, that's a good start. So we do u equals ln of x, du equals 1 over x dx, and then we check to make sure everything is substituted. So the ln of x is u, so we can do that. So now what we're left with is the x and the dx. So those are the ones that still haven't been substituted. And if you look at our du, that is it. It actually does match. So we can just write du here. And then looking at this, you go, oh, that's just a trig substitution. Yeah, so after doing u substitution, we now use trig substitution. See, it's substitution. And I'm gonna, I've got three videos set aside for you to go through all the different types of substitution we have, we've done already, just as a review, more of a condensed version. So we would say that that u at the bottom right here, since it's a one plus u squared, we go back to our little table that we had and we got this entire page already for you to print out so that you have a nice focused version. Um, so yeah, so this is our square plus our square, right? Square root doesn't even matter. What it is is that we want to have that one plus tangent squared. If we have that one plus tangent squared, we can get a secant squared. So we're going to set our x equal to tangent theta, in this case a u. So that right there needs to be a tangent theta squared. And so now I go du equals, and that would be secant squared theta. And then we do all of our substituting again, making sure everything is gone. So my u is tangent theta. And I get tangent squared theta, which I was looking at, looking for. And then the other part, I forgot the d theta here, is uh, secant squared theta d theta. And if you remember, the reason we do that is to turn this into secant squared and then the square root makes it secant theta. So that denominator is now secant theta. And then those secants will cancel, leaving us with tangent secant. So I'm going to move this up here and we end up with tangent theta, secant theta, d theta, and then that obviously is secant theta plus c. Now what we have to do is change our theta back to our u and our u back to the ln of x. So remember how we do this is we take our tangent theta and u and make a little triangle. And then we know that tangent theta is equal to u, so that would be opposite over adjacent, which means this is u squared plus 1. And so secant is, u, is the, the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So that would be the square root u squared plus 1. Where did I get the 2? I don't know. u squared plus 1 plus c. And so that's our theta to u. And now we've got to do u to x. So we've got to re resubstitute everything. And that's very quick. u is ln of x. So that's just ln of x squared plus 1 plus c, and that is our integral. I'm going to make that a little bit larger now since it's our final answer. So ln of x squared plus 1 plus c. Now looking at this, you probably go, well, if that was my answer, then I think I chose the wrong u. Well, there's different ways of doing this. Just because one method works doesn't mean another method's not going to work. And that's the whole point of these is just to throw things at it until something hits. So if we do this integral again, but this time we pick a different u, let's see what happens. So in this one, what we're going to pick is u equals 1 plus ln of x squared, because that would be the next obvious choice. That's the thing that's inside the radical. So that would be our obvious choices. And so du here is 1's gone, and so we end up with 2 ln of x, it's just chain rule, times 1 over x dx. And so now if you look back at what we have, I'm going to erase those marks that are there. And then now this is what we had just gotten rid of. 
So if you notice, after I replace that with a u, I'm left with ln of x over x dx. So I have my ln of x over x dx, and my 2 can just go to the other side. Oops, wrong color. So du over 2 is equal to ln of x over x dx. And so that will replace the ln of x, the x, and the dx. So we end up with 1 over the square root of u du. And by doing this, we don't have to go back and do another substitution with tangent. doesn't mean this is not a good method. It's completely fine. It worked. So this is u to the negative 1 half. So adding 1 would be 1 half. So we get 2 u to the 1 half du. Now I forgot that 2 over here. So there's really a half sitting here like that. And it cancels, leaving us with u to the 1 half. What was my u? this right here, right? Why did I put a du there? I don't know. I got all caught up there. That's supposed to be a plus c. My u is 1 plus ln of x squared. So this would be the square root of 1 plus ln of x squared plus c. So you can see it's exactly the same answer. Two different methods. And that's the point on these. These problems are set there for you to play with and for you to practice with. So you just keep trying things. And u substitution is one of our two main methods. It's u substitution and it's uh, integration by parts. The rest are just simplifying techniques. So on this one, what would you pick? What's my inside? Yes, the obvious is 2x plus 1. Now obviously I labeled this one with something else that we're going to be doing. And this is going to have a little bit of a trick to it. So u equals 2x plus 1. So that means my du is equal to 2 dx. So my dx is equal to du over 2. So now if I plug everything back in, we're also going to have to replace those uh, a's and b's with my start and finish. So my x here is going to stay. And I have u cubed du over 2 from and you would initially go, oh, well, this didn't work. We have an x. But you got to think this is a linear x and that's a linear x x. So it's very quick to solve for. So we would get u minus 1 equals 2x if I solve it, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get u minus 1 over 2 equals x. So I can actually plug it in. So I get, I'm going to write it off the side, u minus 1 over 2 times, uh, we can now put it together, to u over 2u cubed integral like that. So I did get to substitute my x and that's the whole point. What's happening here is when you see this situation and you have something on top that you can easily plug back in, what we're doing is rewriting it with u substitution into a simplified form and you'll see that when we finish. So I still need to, to change those zeros and ones. So my x here is zero which means my u would equal, oops, just an arrow, that's equals. Let's just erase that and do that again. So x equals 0, x equals 1, u equals 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1, u equals 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So we're really going from 1 to 3, 1 to 3. But now when I simplify it, you see I can take out that 4, and we end up with u minus 1 over u cubed du. That was the whole point of this trick. So by taking that, doing this, and then resolving it, what we're doing is changing the binomial from the bottom, well, this is actually a binomial cubed, to having it at the top. And then there, that allows us to distribute. So we end up with u to the negative 2 minus u to the negative 3, and now we have our general powers. So we're just going to add 1 to each. So by adding 1, we get negative u to the negative 1, and then plus 2u to the negative 2, and then from 3 to 1, and we can simplify this. So if we finish this by plugging it in and doing all the work, we're going to get 1 over 18, just like that. I know you know how to simplify this, so I'm not going to waste your time. All right, so that is another method for u substitution. And then our last one is to actually simplify and then use u substitution. So at the very beginning, we just did simplify, but sometimes simplify just makes it nicer. So like this guy, he, he looks horrible. One of the things with exponent rules is if you know you're adding them, adding the exponents, that means that they were multiplied.
So if we're going to take this x plus e to the x, that would be the same as going e to the x times e to the e to the x. It's just like this. If you did x squared times x cubed, you would get x to the fifth. That's 2 plus 3. You're adding them. So if we do this, we've actually simplified it into something that we can use for u substitution. And so your first bet is always to go for the things that are on the inside, our exponent. So u equals e to the x. So du equals e to the x dx. And you can see there it is. There's my e to the x dx, which is my du. So I would end up with e to the u du. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So we get e to the u plus c. Plugging it back in now, we get e to the e to the x plus c. So this is a u substitution, three different ways of doing it. We've actually got two more videos of different ones as well. But the whole point, again, of this is to just throw a u at it. Look at it and think, okay, what's on the inside? That's my best choice. And when I take the integral, the derivative of it, do I get what's left? That's what we're looking for. And if it is, you're good to go. See, so here we picked u equals ln of x. It got rid of everything. Perfectly fine. Here we did u equals 1 plus ln of x squared, and it got rid of everything. So both methods worked fine. You, you probably have your preference on which one you like. There you go. So keep watching.